us to come before. A message was sent. How long has she been in labor? 48 hours. Mm. There's nothing we can do to save either her or the child. Pulse is quite strong. How good to hear an English voice. Congratulations, sir. You have a son and heir. Princess, he's sleeping. Devil, long time the woman's taken. Interminable! Fritz Devoy, what is it? What is it? It's a boy! It's a boy! It's a recruit! <laughs> a new recruit! <laughs> What about the arm? It is hanging from its socket. Dear Wigner, let us simply pull the delivery. You have a good nurse. The English nurse, sent by Queen Victoria. <laughs> they should do very well. Poor left arm still hangs, sir. Yes, I know. The doctors say he must be put into a machine to hold his head straight. That may not cure it. Oh, yes, Fritz, it will soon be mended. It must be. Anyway, apart from that, he's healthy. And intelligent. There you are. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, you're very tired, aren't you? My lovely boy. One day he will be king. Perhaps of all Germany. I hope so. Which of his names shall he be known by? Can it be Albert? No. He must be called after my father, William. He's a Hohenzollern. Sometimes I do not understand you. Will he rides without stirrups? To help him gain his seat. He'll never be able to... He's fallen. He's not hurt. Don't you think it's rather... It's the only way. His balance is so bad. If the poor arm can't be cured, he must learn to act as though he had two good ones. He's falling again. I think that's enough, don't you? No, Fritz. Well, he must learn to ride, and ride well. In his position, it's essential, and he mustn't be pitied. This is uh, German champagne. Uh, it tastes like it, Your Majesty. Do oh, I drink it for economy and from patriotism? Help yourself. I'm afraid my patriotism stops short of my stomach. French champagne is better. Uh, we could put ourselves in the way of acquiring some of it. I want no trouble with France. We shall not avoid it, Your Majesty. The French will not stand by and let us grow, now that we have beaten Austria. Will the French attack us? If they're provoked to, then. Well, we'll but don't be afraid. We have the industry, the will, the best army, and the biggest guns in Europe. The real power lies with us. May I like that for you, Herr Bismarck? No, Count Bismarck. I've made him a count now. Uh, can you? I'm sure I can. <laughs> no. Ah, mm. <laughs> there's a good boy, Willikins. I can ride now, too. And one day I shall be King of Prussia and Emperor of Germany and ride at the head of my troops. Oh, don't, don't be so restless. Your wobble the table is not very strong. I can. Now, I don't agree with you. We can never match France. We can if all Germany joins her force behind ours. And she will if the French attack us. And we shall win, Your Majesty, and be the unchallenged leaders of Europe. 
I want no part in it. There's no logic to it. Politics are not based on logic, sir. They are the capacity for choosing the most useful way. I want to reign here in peace. Why has Grandpa gone? Have you offended him? Oh, no. Elderly gentlemen sometimes have trouble with their bladders. How will you manage? My brother? To make war with France. Oh. <laughs> we... We shall name your cousin, Prince Leopold, heir to the Spanish throne. The Spaniards will be glad to have a Hohenzollern, but the French will object and demand us to withdraw him. When we refuse, they will attack. But well, that's a secret. Huh? 1887. The Hohenzollerns reign supreme. Living quietly with their surviving children, the Crown Prince and Princess were excluded from power and politics by Bismarck and the Emperor. Their eldest child, Prince Wilhelm, increasingly at odds with his parents, married Princess Victoria of Schleswig-Holstein-Augustenburg, familiarly known as Dona. What do you think of this picture of the Tsar? He sent it to me personally. I shall visit Russia shortly, Dona. And he will make me an honorary colonel of one of his regiments. It is customary. And it's as well to be on good terms with them. So Bismarck says. And when my grandfather dies, will you serve my father? If I'm spared to. Oh, I'm sure you'll be spared, but uh, you don't admire him, do you? The capacity for admiring man is only moderately developed in me. It's an effect of my eye that is sharper for weaknesses than good qualities. Mm. Your father will want me to obey the majority. That requires a suppleness of character I don't possess. Yes. But would you remain chancellor? It will be my duty. Oh, you'd become a liberal then? Oh, I've never been doctrinaire, liberal, conservative, reactionary. All these names seem to me useless luxuries, like the trappings of state. The emperor gave me the order of the Grand Cross. I would sooner have had a horse or a barrel of good Rhenish wine. God, your cellar's full of wine. Maybe enough, but I intend to drink more than... 5,000 bottles of champagne before my life is out. <laughs> you eat and drink far too much. That for you. Mm, I dare say I shall reform. I have a doctor now. But he asks questions, and I don't answer questions. Mm. Then you must have a vet. <laughs> oh, I'm chiefly suffering from age. It will kill me in the end. Uh, two things have given me great pleasure in life. Wine and politics. Now the doctor has forbidden wine, and I'm to eat herrings and drink beer. And what about politics? Mm. There's nothing more to do in our lifetime except hold what we have. Oh, but my dear Prince Bismarck... Uh, yes, do smoke if you wish. Thank you. My dear Prince Bismarck, I cannot possibly agree with that. There are always new situations to create. Oh, a statesman can't create anything. He must wait and listen until he hears the steps of God sounding through events. Then leap up and grasp the hem of his garment. <laughs> When I am emperor, I'm going to make Germany a world power. With my talents and your experience. I shall not be here. Well, I, I hope you will be here. But in any case, I must start learning now. Mm -hmm. The best school would be a circus training under a juggler. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All contending forces must be kept in the air but only so high that one can catch them again. However, it wouldn't be a bad idea if your highness were to attend the foreign office, say, twice a week. 
Your father, the Crown Prince, has married certain views. I know. English views. With respect, they do him no good. Oh, yes. He fails to appreciate that continental Europe is held in balance by a series of treaties negotiated by Prince Bismarck. I see we have more railways than anyone else. Uh, yes, yes, yes. The Chancellor has formed a League of the Three Emperors. Your Highness has heard of it? No. It is a private understanding between His Majesty, the Emperor Franz Joseph of Austria, and the Tsar of Russia. And therefore... Tsar Alexander speaks very highly of me. We all do, Your Royal Highness, and that is why we trust the understanding will continue. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I intend to visit the Tsar in the near future. Uh, there is no need. He is coming here. Oh. Please read these inside the building. Come. Oh, damn it. But we are as strong as these pieces of paper. And as our army, Baron. Our army is simply a credit of strength to balance our account. Yes. Prince Bismarck used to scorn treaties. But now our position depends on them. They deserve as much study as uh, trains. They resemble a tangle of lines at a large railway junction. And the chief signalman is growing old, so younger men must seize the initiative. Hmm? Your Royal Highness, initiative without tact is like a flood without dikes. We have to play the great game against England. Against our natural ally? There are no natural allies, only marriages of convenience and occasional adultery. <laughs> yes. What? No love matches? Very few. Well, then. I must learn, quickly. Oh, but there is no hurry, Your Highness. Well, there may be. My father... My father is not well. Oh, I am sorry to hear that. Yes, come in. Good morning, Papa. Willie, what a rare surprise. Huh? Why are you wearing that? I put it on as a compliment to Mama. Very thoughtful of you. <coughs> I trust I find you well, Papa. I have a cold. You have too many colds. I'm sorry. Ah. My, my throat is slightly inflamed. How is Donna? Oh, she is indisposed this morning, but that's quite usual in her condition. I trust this time you'll have a daughter. That would give no happiness to me. I would rather provide princes for my country and secure the succession. But, of course, in this family, I do realize the daughters are preferred. Don't be absurd. And when your mama gets here, please try not to discuss politics. Oh, it's impossible to discuss politics with mama. She knows very little as she always gets angry. Your mama understood politics when you were in your cradle. I know. And she has the same views as my English grandfather. Who was a great and enlightened man. And who died a quarter of a century ago. <laughs> I read one of his memoranda in the Foreign Office this morning. Where? You read? Where? Well, I thought you knew. I know nothing. Well, Prince Bismarck has most kindly arranged for me to be attached to the Foreign Office. Nobody consulted me. Nobody trusts you, do they, Papa? It's, it's a useful part of my education to see dispatches and learn how foreign affairs are run. The Chancellor thinks. And I find it quite interesting. Bismarck hopes to, ho hopes to influence you. <coughs> All I've had for the last 20 years from that man have been insults. I've never been allowed access to such things. He has my grandfather's permission. Oh. The Emperor is simply looking to the future. The future? Thank God is not entirely in your hands. It is your mother's and my daily prayer, Willie, that I shall live long enough for you to grow into a stable and serious man before you have to rule. You are not ready, Willie. Ah, oh, Mama. Willie, dear. Your grandmother would be pleased. <coughs> oh, my darling. <coughs> We are honoured, my dear, to have our son with us here today. He has spared us some of his valuable time at the Foreign Office, where he's been learning to take over the affairs of the country. What is this? Papa is offended by what seems to be a perfectly normal arrangement. Prince Bismarck thought that in my... Prince Bismarck has arranged for Willie to have access to Foreign Office dispatches. 
Will you to see dispatches? Yes, Mama. I can't stand endlessly in the, in the wings of the theater of life. I am an adult and I'm second in succession to the throne. You are an extremely immature, conceited young man. Your father has been serving his country faithfully for the last 30 years and he has never been allowed near the ministries. You must write to Prince Bismarck at once. My father has a serious throat infection. The doctors say it may be malignant, but they can't be sure. Of course, these, these fellows never are. Grandmama is sending for a specialist from England, someone called Mackenzie, but uh, no one here thinks much of him. It is a grave responsibility. So, the Crown Prince is dead. No, Your Majesty. He's ill, but still alive. Uh, the young uh, William, a bit of sign in my letters. Yes, I think so. I'll publish an edict. Do that, that's good. You done well, Miss Mark. I've always been pleased with you. Always done a very good the French giving. And there's an old Prussian law which states a man who cannot speak cannot rule. Rubbish. Well, in any case, my father hasn't long to go either. I've drafted a letter to be sent to the German princes on my accession. Have you read it? Burn it. We can put on our watches, but time doesn't go any faster for it. Vineyard. Unless my sight deceives, and clustering grapes too close at hand, and underneath the spreading leaves, what? Yes, I know. Not long now, Your Highness. The doctors only give your father a few hours. Then we must go, Donna. Come, Anna. I must go and change. Maybe a plot. Oh, your mother, you mean. And uh, what does Prince Bismarck advise? He's sitting on the fence as usual, biding his time. But he'll support you. Yes. Oh, this stupid attempt of hers to try and cause trouble. She wants to send all my father's documents to England. His letters, papers, private journals, they belong to me. Then take them. How? You'll have the military. Arrest my own mother? Well, Your Highness, that may not be necessary, but... Uh... The army shall do it.
Majesty. The soldiers, they're all over the place. Why? But they're here, in the palace and all over the park. The Emperor is dying. Come to see Papa. He is dead. He's dead. He's dead. I know. I have come to pay my respects. Where are his papers? I don't know. these soldiers. They're my men. His papers aren't here, are they? Where are yours? You know where my desk is. You had no softness for me. from your grandmother when you were born. Is it a fine boy? It seems as if I had seen a fine noble ship sink at sea. With all the nation's hopes, its freedom, its progress. Go to your room, Mama! Do gone. Very well. Uh, tomorrow then. I'm building a yacht <laughs> to race at cows. Also a train. I'm designing the carriages myself. They're all going to be in white and gold. Yes, I shall be travelling a great deal now. And how was your visit to St. Petersburg, Your Majesty? Oh, uh, very cordial, but. The military reviews we saw, I thought, were clearly aimed against Germany. Fortunately, I'm the great favourite of Tsar Alexander, so I shall be using my influence to deflect the Russian military away from us towards, say, the Balkans? Against Austria? Mm -hmm. uh, Prince Bismarck won't agree. Mm. He's not here, is he? He's just an old man sitting at home by the stove. Oh, I have great respect for him, of course. I grew up as a child and sat on his knee. I'd have given my life for him. But now, well, I'll let the old bounder snuffle on for a few more months and then... <laughs> I will not be put down like an old dog. Russia is the enemy, gentlemen. Therefore, we must be strong and united and above all, we must have... Good morale. 
Now, for example, these miners in Westphalia are on strike. They're overworked and underpaid. I intend to make the owners provide better wages and conditions. There's a ministry for that. I wish to be king of the poor, Chancellor, as well as of the rich, like my illustrious forebear, Frederick the Great. Uh, mutineers get the police out and shoot them. And plunge us all into civil war? <laughs> I don't intend to start my reign by shedding the blood of my subjects. Hmm? Well, what do the rest of you say? I see. I have no ministers. You're all Bismarcks. If your majesty insists on these dangerous policies... Yes? Your majesty should constitutionally consult his chancellor. You're never in Berlin. This is a royal order made by his late majesty in 1852. If I may draw your majesty's attention to it, it forbids other ministers to approach the crown without the consent of the minister president, which I also am. What is this old piece of paper he keeps waving at us? It is despair, Your Majesty. We have come from the political deathbed of a great man. You can revoke the 1852 order by royal decree. Can I, Holstein? Oh, yes. Or Your Majesty could call upon the Chancellor to annul the order. If he refuses, he must go. And it would be his own doing. <laughs> oh. Then I would feel as if I'd lost another grandfather. Still, if this is the fate which God has decided for me, then I must bear it. I must find a new chancellor. You'll advise me there, Philip. And Valdezay will answer for the army. You, of course, Count Holstein, will take the foreign ministry. Thank you, sir. Mm. Yes, well, I shall visit Prince Bismarck mm. myself then. First thing tomorrow morning. See to it. So. It has fallen to me, then, to be the officer of the watch on the ship at state. The course remains the same, but now full speed ahead. Mm. Do you trust Holstein? Oh, he works hard, but he's no imagination. His only claim to distinction is to have ordered an egg on a veal cutlet. <laughs> <laughs> um, may I advise Your Majesty? Of course, of course, I value it. Your Majesty should proclaim that Prince Bismarck had to retire because of ill health. I have been waiting for half an hour. But I had no idea. I sent you a message. And nobody told me I was in the garden playing with the dogs. Oh, it doesn't matter. Will Your Majesty please sit down? No, no, no. I have a busy morning. I see that you are not exactly overwhelmed with the business of state. Oh, I see all the necessary papers every evening after dinner. I sit and go through them. Everything is referred to you. Too much. It's too much. Yes, I agree. Too much. Has anything gone wrong? Something considerable to carry Your Majesty here that early? <laughs> I feel imperfectly shaved and incorrectly dressed. But please, do Your Majesty sit down. I prefer that we stand. You have invoked the order of my royal forebear. It was a law made to establish the position of the First Minister. Which I will now revoke. Your Majesty doesn't intend to diminish the Chancellorship. I have the power to. Do you wish to sign it? Or will you still oppose me? I oppose what is unwise. I have served you, your father, your grandfather, but Your Majesty wishes to do everything. I wish to be obeyed. Or you find any number of people who will obey. You can be like the Tsar and rule through the trees. I stand for good government. And I do not. Just because you are elderly, do not suppose that you may speak as you wish. You are speaking as two men. I as the old and you as the young one. But man to man, your power stop at my door. Then who is to rule Germany, the emperor or his chancellor? The two together. 
but I will not serve in chains. I am your sovereign! Worn my yoke long enough for better masters. You may take my papers if you want to. Oh, I, I beg your majesty's pardon. I spoke hastily and very stupidly. What is this? The Russian imperial crest. This is nothing. That's private papers. It's a letter, isn't it? <laughs> From the Tsar, it's personal. It's about me. His imperial majesty honors me with his confidence. Why should he write to you about me? It's conversation. He is a badly brought up boy of bad faith. It's his opinion. I will not have it. In future, all state affairs are to be referred to me. Your Majesty expects me to resign? You may write your letter when you wish. I will accept it. I'm not ungrateful, but I am not a child. I'll say you are ill. Bismarck! Your Majesty! We can arrive at some arrangement. 